as I understand it, this was brought to you by Mark Ruffalo. So what uh, stage was it in at the time that he brought it to you? And what were your initial conversations with him like in terms of what kind of movie you both wanted to make? Yeah, the, the project, Mark uh, brought the project to me in 2017. This is only a year after the New York Times expose by Nathaniel Rich uh, broke uh, in 2016. And they already had, there was already a first draft of the script. They were really moving very quickly. They felt a great sense of relevance of this story, this ongoing battle. Uh, and, and, but Mark and I, I think, talked about where the script was at that time and felt that we could probably go deeper a little bit. And uh, that there were I issues about the complex dynamic of Rob a lot in relationship to the firm Taft Law Firm in Cincinnati and the dynamics between his uh, managing, the managing partner, who ultimately became managing partner, uh, that Tim Robbins plays, Tom Turp, and just what it meant for a defense firm to turn mm -hmm. around and start to take on a plaintiff's case um, and challenge a chemical company like DuPont, who they really considered like, you know, a brother to the kind of clients that they, that they represented. Um, and so by the time my schedule opened up, it was a year later, and I brought on a new writer. Matthew uh, Carnahan was busy directing a film of his own. And I brought on this amazing guy, Mario Correa. We, went, we all went out to Cincinnati and met all of the principal pl people in the story. And really began sort of with fresh eyes on it. And Mark joined us and Rob Balot uh, sort of chaperoned the trip from Cincinnati to Parkersburg, West Virginia. We went to Wilbur's farm. We met Wilbur's brother, Jim, a lot of the people who actually appeared in the film, but were even more of them were present through the entire process of making the film and really became our touchstones for the specificity of the story and the details and the nuances of what we were trying to, trying to do. Christine, uh, you've been producing Todd's movies basically from the beginning since Poison. Uh, on a film like this, is it, is it different working on a film like this with him that does originate with someone else as opposed to when it's his original material? I mean, at what point in the process do you come in and how do you see your role as far as facilitating the movie and his best work? I mean, you know, in many ways it's, it's all the same because we are working hard together to bring... Uh, you know the the script, which you know is is a blueprint for what will end up on the screen, but um, and and but not you know there's there's so much that has to happen to it as Todd you know alluded to, uh, so you know uh, we started the second Todd was interested in it, um, Killer myself and Pam Koffler started figuring out what that process would be. Um, and it wasn't easy. I mean, you know, this, uh, when I think about the real challenges of this particular uh, film, a lot of them were weather. Uh, it was the longest winter I think any of us had ever seen ever in our lives in any place. Uh, and, um, and, and really just uh, uh, trying to make sure, I mean, well, one of, the, one of the benefits, I mean, I remember one of the last times I was here with Todd, was for Carol, uh, which we shot in Cincinnati, but we were hiding Cincinnati. And this movie, we get to not hide Cincinnati because it actually took place there, which was really great. Um, so uh, anyway, it was, I've now, now I've lost track of your question, <laughs> but, um, uh, I, but I guess the challenges really were, you know, these were real people. Um, Rob Balot was on our set every day, almost. Um, and if he wasn't on our set, he was available uh, you know, by telephone to ask questions, which we did all the time. Um, so there was a lot of, I, I feel like there was a lot of responsibility for this story. Ed, how did you feel that uh, shooting in those real locations informed the look of the film? Well, I, I had a lot of vested interest in this. I went to university uh, 45 minutes from there at Ohio University. So I knew the area, and we had shot again in uh, Cincinnati for Carroll. 
And uh, even my physical condition, I have to admit, is due to heavy metals and contamination. So a story like this, I really wanted to uh, participate in. I'm curious what the sort of guiding principles were for you in terms of the cinematography. Because one of the things I love about this movie is I really like the kind of restrained observational style you came up with, and yet it still somehow really draws you in. I mean... Well, that has a large due to Todd. I mean, I, it's always going to film school, each film, because the references and uh, the stylistic considerations, because we're always looking for the visual metaphor for the story. And he looked back to the 70s and looked at Alan Pakula and Gordon Willis and looked at those films that were so, you know, they're the paranoid thriller genre and how restrained the camera was and how Gordon Willis always allows you to participate with the image. It wasn't this subjective, aggressive look in. So we were always very conscious of though that idea. And then, you know, you explore those ways of doing it and hopefully it works. It gives kind of a respect to the audience for them to participate with the image not like, you know, forcing them to feel something. It seems to me like this would be a very challenging movie in the sense that it's very information-based. There's a lot of information you have to get across to the audience, but you also have to draw them, you know, keep the emotional thread going and everything like that. So how do you keep that balance going in the editing? Uh, it's, it's a hard question. I think you just... I mean, you just go at it and you just see how much, because it's, I mean, it's a tricky film because it takes place, it's a lawyer looking through a paper. So, so how do you make that interesting and exciting? <laughs> but so it's just the amount of information you give. You have enough repetition so you get it, but then you just need to keep the information. You have to find out with the audience, with time, with, with Rob. And that's what we try to do. We try to sort of balance, like, okay, we can say it twice, but then he needs to find out. We can't repeat. The volume of information has to be spread out through the film. And so that's what we try, we try to do, and we try to keep it. Again, I, we watch, I watch a lot of the, the 70s film that has that kind of, the pace is very specific, and the tension, and how much you, you withdraw, how much you show. And that's basically what we try to do. And then sort of there's a musical aspect too that we try. And then when Marcelo came in, it just becomes sort of everything we're trying just kind of elevates. And that's basically what we're doing in the cutting room. And Fonzie, you know, we work with temp music while, while cutting. And it starts to help structure and kind of uh, provide uh, uh, sort of examples of what the emotional kind of component will be in the final role of the composer. And he tried this piece of piano music during the exact piece, uh, discovery montage is what we would, how we refer to that sequence. And it was this long improvisational piece of piano that was an unexpected choice. I really, I knew we needed a continuous piece of music for that for that section. It couldn't be too aggressive, but if it dissipated too far, you wouldn't feel like it was being bracketed and there was a through line to it. And this piece of music was was really, you know, it, it evoked things that we we just didn't really know what we were going to do until it, it we heard it and it kind of, and it, then it provided a kind of accidental template for how to cut the rhythms of it. Um, and then we brought in uh, Marcelo, who had a very short, uh, reduced t amount of time to do this very complicated and demanding score, which went from everything from solo piano to symphonic, you know, there was strings involved in string quartet, I'll let you describe it further. But that piece of music was one remarkable sort of surprise that Fonzie first found. Some of the piano music in here reminded me a lot of like David Shire's score for the conversation. Yeah. Uh, and I'm curious what some of, if you were thinking about movies like that or if that's just coincidence. We, we were thinking more of the style of those films, not necessarily, we didn't talk about the music of those films, but rather the atmosphere of those films. I think that was more what we were looking for. But I think it's interesting this particular sequence that Todd is talking about because the entire film uh, Todd really was very adamant about the music and the instruments always being very processed and almost like infected. That's how he described it, like how the instruments should be just never pure in any ways, except 
for this one very long piece, this long sequence of the explanation, um, which is solo piano and it's pure piano. There's no effects, there's no nothing, and it's just a single performance that we shaped together. It was, it was wonderful and it was almost like the closest that I've had of marrying my old original love of jazz and improvisation with scoring because although I wrote a piece, we then kind of hammered it out together with Fonzie, with me playing and like, okay, we like this, we don't, and we kind of put it together like that. And it was a very riveting thing to do for a composer and kind of this real time collaboration like this is it's really and me being a pianist was um, just kind of everything comes together and and being able to react and and sometimes Todd would be telling me things like on the headphones as I was playing and it was really <laughs> kind of like an actor being being you know not kind of exactly like an actor being uh, you know directed and um, and it's really and and it, it comes from the loudest most busiest part of the score with then cut to this thing and only honestly as far as I can tell only Todd Haynes would really think of of having uh, this kind of the, the climax of the film in a certain way be so understated musically and at the same time it it puts it underlines that scene in a way that only really by having less we could have done it by just having a simple piano sound I want to thank you all for coming and talking about this movie with us